in the name of the one holy and undivided Trinity. Amen. Please be seated. If you've come to our Wednesday service, then you've probably heard that this was the year I finally decided to start a garden in my backyard. My mom had been telling me for years I need to do it, and this year felt like the year to start. So I decided to make do with what we already had around. I collected the biggest pots that we happened to have, and then I got a few more off Facebook buying nothing group. I gathered scrap wood from former DIYs that we had left over, and I made a box. And after gathering everything, I had a garden that was about two feet by six feet, enough to plant a couple vegetables. And now, I'm the type of person who tends to go for something and then figure out what mistakes I made along the way and try to fix them. Whenever I try a new hobby, I kind of dive in head first, use the momentum of the excitement to get moving, and then sort things out and learn along the way. But with this, I thought I would take it seriously. I would do my research. So first, I looked into the type of soil I would need to get. So I looked up some YouTube videos and some blogs that claimed to be gardening for beginners. And I quickly became overwhelmed by what felt like recipes and potions for the perfect type of soil. I was expecting them to say, buy this type of soil. We recommend this brand. I was looking for simple. Not buy these three bags and mix them together in these proportions, but also take into account your location, the climate, the season. And looking back, I have no doubt that these people were correct, and it is much more complicated than I anticipated. But I was starting out, and I wanted simple, simple, simple. So I decided I would just head to the store and ask for help. But when I got there, it was the busiest day, it seemed, and I couldn't find a free salesperson. So I did what I thought was the next best thing, and I asked the guy whose cart was filled with soil what he recommended. And he just shrugged and said, these yellow bags are the cheapest. They're back there. <laughs> so then I decided to follow that guy's advice. And I headed over to the cheap yellow bags of soil. I saw pictures of vegetables on it, and I thought, I'm good. I grabbed four bags, and I lugged them home. And of course, as I'm unloading my car, I then read the fine print. This soil is to mix into your garden. It's not to be your entire garden. And at this point, I sigh and I think, good enough. In today's gospel, we hear a parable about a sower who scattered seeds and they fall on different types of soil. And this is an interesting gospel because after we hear the parable, we hear Jesus explain it, which we don't always get. We hear about four types of soils. First, the seed that fell into a path of firm, packed dirt. This, the seed has no way to take root and were eaten by birds. We learn that this is when the word of God, the seed, goes to someone who doesn't understand it before it has time to take root in their soul, the evil one snatches it up. Then we hear about the word of God scattered on rocky ground. There wasn't much soil, so the plants quickly sprang up. But because the roots weren't deep, they were quickly scorched by the sun and shriveled up. Side note, this one most accurately describes my current garden. Jesus explains that these are people who hear the word with joy and excitement. They are motivated. They get moving. But they don't have the support. So when things get hard, they give up quickly. They go back to their old ways. 
they aren't sustained. Next, we hear about seeds that fell amongst thorns. As they grew, they were choked. They had nowhere to go, nowhere to grow. These, we hear, are people who hear the word of God, but are content with the ways of the world. They don't want to make room for the word. They don't want to change. And finally, we hear about the good soil. The seeds that fell and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. These are the people who hear the word of God, who understand it, who accept it, who have support, who have cultivated lives where the word of God can thrive. And in their lives, you can see the good fruit of the word. They reflect Christ's love. They care for God's people. They seek and serve Christ in all persons. So this is obviously when we talk about how we can be good soil. What do we need to do to be people in the story who hear God's word and multiply it? And I think there are some obvious things. We need to be people of prayer. We need to be part of a community that supports us in our faith and gives us opportunities to support others. We need to study the word of God, read and be with the word. We need to serve others, to care for those in our communities. We need to worship, to come to church online or in person. We need to make our faith a rhythm of our life. My parents are seasoned gardeners. So when I was starting my garden, I called them and I asked for advice. They made it too complicated, so that's why I went to the blogs. <laughs> they did give me some tips on how to start, but then they reminded me that this is all a process. If you have a garden year after year, the soil will be depleted of its nutrients. So you have to continue to tend to it. If you neglect it, there will be signs. This year, they noticed that their tomatoes aren't looking as great, and it's their sign, their reminder, to focus on the soil. The same is true for our spiritual lives. We can't just put a ton of effort in and then assume the work is done, and then we can just coast the rest of our lives. Just like with gardening, we follow a rhythm of the seasons, and so do our spiritual lives. We have to always be looking for ways we can put in more effort. And we also have to be looking for places we can rest. Let's not forget the spirituality of resting, of Sabbath. Sometimes the best thing we can do for a garden is to give the soil time to re rest and revitalize. The same is true for us. So, with all this soil talk from my garden and my parents and from Jesus, it can be easy for us to really focus on our lives as the soil. What do we need to do to be good soil? And of course this is important. But if we just focus on the soil, we miss a hugely important part. The seed. If we make our lives the perfect plot of land, if we get the soil ratios just right, we water it the exact right amount, somehow control of the weather. We can do all that, be the perfect plot of land, and still, nothing will grow. Because we need the seed. We need the word of God. We cannot do this on our own. It is only through God, through God's word, through God's love, through God's work in this world, that any of this is possible. So if we are so focused on what we are doing, we could lose sight on what God is doing. God's word enters our lives and breaks it open in new and unexpected ways. It grows beyond measure and imagination. But we must leave room for Jesus. We must leave space for God. We must tend our lives, make them ready for God, but then we need to get out of the way, get out of our own way. We must remember 
that we are not the gardeners. We are not the sowers. God is. So when we tend the gardens of our faith, let us focus on what is in our control, building lives that leave room for God's love to thrive. And then let us focus on the amazing presence of God in our midst. In our lives and in the lives of those around us, let us support one another's gardens. Because when we do that, we will look out into our midst and see a lush and holy land, a world filled with God's love. And it will multiply, some a hundredfold, some 60, some 30. Amen.